Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about surface area of pyramids and cones. So first let's start with the definition. Pyramid is a polyhedron in which the base is a polygon and the lateral faces are all triangles. So um, the lateral faces, and let me draw a picture. So here's our face. We've got, in this case, a nice parallelogram, a quadrilateral. And then all of the lateral faces are going to be triangles all coming up towards a common vertex. So let's label some of these so we can see what the, the names of things are called. <laughs> so we have one of these is a lateral edge. All right. The very, very top is called the vertex of the pyramid. And I know that technically these points at the bottom corners where the the uh, faces all come together are vertices, but when we speak about pyramids specifically, and we say the vertex of the pyramid, it's that top point where all the triangles come together. All right, our lateral face is going to be one of our triangles. All right, our base is the non-triangular piece, or where all the triangles are coming from. So that here is going to be our base. And this would be one of our base edges. So just like in the last video we did with, pyram or with uh, prisms, we had lateral edges and base edges. We have the same kind of thing going here, but only one base this time. All right, now a regular pyramid is a pyramid whose base is a regular polygon. So remember, that means that all of the sides are congruent. Now, technically, all the angles would be congruent, too. In this case, it doesn't look like they are. It looks more like a parallelogram than a square, but, or I guess a rhombus than a square. But it's only because we've kind of shifted this a little bit so that we can draw it. We're still going to assume that these are all 90 degree angles if it tells us it's a regular uh, polygon, a regular pyramid. All right, now the height of a regular pyramid because it has to be perpendicular, is going to come straight down to the base, the center of the base of the pyramid. All right, the height connects, oh, the vertex to the center of the base, and the slant height, so that's H. Now this one is what we call L, and that's the slant height. So we're going to have technically two different types of height for a pyramid. We're going to have the height from the base to the top perpendicular, and then we're going to have the slant height, which I'm so sorry, is not that section there. It's actually from the vertex to the center perpendicular to a base edge. So that is what we call the slant height, and that's L. All right, so um, notice both of those pieces, especially the slant height, comes down to the middle of that triangle at the base edge and it's perpendicular. That creates right triangles, which we're going to use in future problems. We're going to use Pythagorean theorem a lot with pyramids. Okay, so now let's take a look at the surface area of a regular pyramid. So this works for regular pyramids. So again, let's draw our regular pyramid here. We know that we have, oops, Let's make that a little bit better there. All right, we have all of our pieces. Okay, we have our height, H, goes from the top down to the center, and our slant height, L, goes perpendicular to a base edge, not the center. All right, so now the lateral area is just the area of all of the lateral faces or the triangles. So think about the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So if I have, um, now it's not always going to be four. Sometimes the base of your pyramid is going to be something like a pentagon or a hexagon. So if I take all of the side lengths all the way around, that's going to be the perimeter of my base. And then we're going to have to multiply that perimeter of the base times the slant height and then divide by two. 
because it's a triangle. One half perimeter of the base times the slant height will give us the area of all the triangles together. Now the surface area is going to be that area of all the lateral faces plus the area of the base. Now in this case, again, it's a square that's a little easier, but later it's going to get a little more complicated. All right, let's look at an example. So we have a slant height, remember this is our L, of nine centimeters, and we have a uh, base length of six centimeters. So first, let's find our lateral area. Our lateral area is going to be four times six, because that's going to give us all of the, uh, the perimeter of the base, times the slant height, which is the height of each one of those triangles, times one half, because it is a triangle, area is one half base times height. If we multiply all of those together, our lateral area becomes 108, all right, and centimeters squared. Then our surface area is going to be that lateral area plus the area at the base. They told us it was a regular pyramid, so I can assume this is a square. So my area of the base is going to be 36, which is, gives me a total of 144 centimeters squared. All right, uh, let's look at another example. A little different this time, we don't have the slant height. So if I want to find the surface area, I have to have that slant height to figure out the height of my triangle. So in this case, we have to use this right triangle that I just created to find our slant height. So if we look, the little bottom part of that right triangle that I drew is half of the length across. So it's going to be half of the side length which is four, half of eight is four. Now I have three squared plus four squared equals L squared, and L ends up being five. So now I've found my slant height, I can figure all this out. Now let's say we forget our big fancy formula. How could we find the surface area? Well, we can just find the area of all the pieces. Let's break it down into little pieces. So let's find the area of just one of the triangles. It's one half base, which is eight, times the height, which is five. So that's going to give me 20. Now, how many of those triangles do I have in this problem? I have four. So let's write that four times. All right, and then I want to add that to the area of the base. And it's a regular pyramid, so it's going to be 6 times 6, which is 50, oh, sorry, 64. And we add those all together, and we have... 2, 4, 6, 8, so 14, so 144. Oh, happens to be the same as the last problem. Coincidence. All right, so let me flip my page here to our next examples. So now let's look at a cone. So a cone is just like a pyramid, but the base is a circle. Just like in the last video, we talked about prisms and cylinders. Cylinders are just like prisms with a circular base. Cones are just like pyramids with a circular base. So instead of one half perimeter of the base times the, the slant height, the perimeter of a circle is a circumference, two pi times r. And the one half and the two end up canceling each other out, and we get pi r l. So here I've got my cone, all right, my lateral area is pi r times the slant height. And the surface area is going to be pi r times the slant height plus the area of the circle, which is 2 pi, oh, sorry, not 2, just pi r squared. All right, so let's look at a couple examples. We have surface area of the right cone. We know L, we know R. We're just going to stick it in the formula. And we've got surface area, so we have pi r L plus pi r squared. So we have pi times 3 times 8 plus pi times 3 squared is going to be 24 pi plus 9 pi, which is 33 pi, and then our units are inches squared. So if I'm given the lateral area and the radius, it's just a matter of using our formulas. Now, in this case, the next example, I have the height of my cone and the radius, but I don't have my lateral side or my, or my lateral height, uh, sorry, my slant height. So um, I need to find it. And again, we have a right triangle, so I can use Pythagorean theorem. Five squared 
plus 12 squared equals L squared. So L ends up being 13. Now I can use my formula. So I have pi times my radius times my slant height, which is 13, plus the area of the base, which is pi times 5 squared. And simplifying that, I have 65 pi plus 25 pi, and that's going to give me 90 pi centimeters squared. All right, so there's a few examples, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.